Hi, Nina. What are we going to talk about today? Hey, Steve. I thought we would talk about sexual harassment delivered remotely. You know, some have speculated that now that we're not as often in the brick and mortar workplace as more and more of the workforce is working remotely, that perhaps we would expect to see a similar decrease in incidents of sexual harassment. And that has not been my experience. Um, the rationale for that belief is that maybe because the, uh, the would-be predator and the victim and are not in the same workplace that the sexual harassment cannot be delivered. But that is a misconception about what sexual harassment is about or the different forms it can take. There is the textbook, you know, physical touching sexual harassment. Uh, we all think of that as sort of like the textbook type of sexual harassment where the uh, predator touches uh, the, the breasts or the intimate body parts of the buttocks of the woman. And it can even take the guise of something more um, subtle, like uh, a hand on the knee or a massaging of the shoulders. That is equally unlawful if it is unwanted as sexual harassment. Um, but there are less, um, there are non-physical forms of sexual harassment that are just un as unlawful. And we've, we know about some of them. Uh, we so know talk about, a little bit about the types of sexual harassment that could occur in either environment, either in the old fashioned brick and mortar office or uh, virtually. Sure. So verbal sexual harassment is uh, a very common form uh, and it can uh, be in the form of making repeated sexist or sexualized jokes propositioning someone else for a date repeatedly when it's clear that it's uh, unwanted, uh, commenting on that person's body parts or, or dress, uh, that easily could be delivered you know, in person in the, in the brick and mortar workplace or remotely. And it's just as unlawful if it's delivered remotely. There are some types of sexual harassment though or, that are really kind of unique to the remote environment. And that's really where I think we need more education. Yeah, um, tell us so, more about that one. Sure, yeah. So the switch from in-person settings to the virtual world has unleashed this whole new, all, all of these different types of sexual harassment that perhaps we didn't have as much before. Um, sexual harassment delivered via Zoom. Come, come, uh, come closer to the camera, sweetheart, so I could get a better look at you. Sexual harassment delivered via FaceTime where comments are made about body parts or appearance. Sexual harassment delivered by text or on a social media platform. All of those um, take a, uh, are much more uh, common in the virtual environment. And again, uh, just as unlawful. Yeah, so, talk about the blurring of the lines between, you know, where does the workplace start and end in the virtual world? Sure, so I think this is where it gets tricky because the, the less educated we are about the fact that there are different ways that sexual harassment can be delivered, other than the ones where we commonly think of, um, the greater the danger that the, the would-be perpetrator of the conduct and the person receiving the conduct are not going to recognize it as unlawful. Um, this form of sexual harassment can be very subtle and difficult to detect. And I think it's because when an employee dons their work clothes to begin their work day, right? It sends a message to them, both to the predator, would-be predator and to the target, I'm going to work. And th their conduct generally is governed accordingly. You're in the workplace. When, when people are working remotely, they are working at all hours of the day and night. They often don't bother to get dressed in work-related attire. They're in their pajamas, sitting on their couch you know, on their cell phone, uh, typing out a text or an email, or they're sitting cross-legged on their bed and they're on their laptop and, and working. Um, and there is where, as you've said it, Steve, the lines do get blurred. There's a level of informality to remote working that does not exist in the workplace. And when lines get blurred, that's where the trouble can start. Um, the person that would otherwise know better and refrain from making sexualized comments face to face in the workplace may very well feel emboldened to deliver sexualized messages via texts, for example, at nine o'clock at night after maybe he's had a, a couple of glasses of uh, wine or beer with dinner. Uh, and similarly, the person at the receiving end of those comments 
may feel uncomfortable, but not really sure what's going on here, may not recognize it as such as unlawful sexual harassment when she's at home um, in, in her own space. Uh, and that I think is what we really need to talk about and be aware of. Uh, and unless an employer's sexual harassment training really covers sexual harassment delivered remotely, I think this danger will persist that both the, the person that uh, is per, uh, perpetrating, uh, perpetrating the conduct and the person on the receiving end, both very well may not recognize that there is sexual harassment going on here. It's just being delivered remotely. So really what you're saying there is a concluding point. The training sort of has to catch up with the virtual work world that we're all experiencing now. Yeah, there's no question about it, Steve. All right. All right, thank you, Nina. If you believe that you have been the target of sexual harassment in your work office or while working remotely, uh, please go to our website to learn more about your rights and get in touch with us directly if you feel you've been the victim of sexual harassment.